right place at the right time tony was like building and was like a kind of you know he he stays out of the limelight these days but back then he was like a force to be reckoned with he was like he was like steamrolling through hurricane <laughs> vegas man yeah like, on every level yeah i mean dude was like a kind of he's sort of becoming this kind of like a sort of almost like celebrity status yeah, type yeah. person in like the a, scene, you a, know, it's a, like the Gallagher of turntables. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think they got like, I can't remember what year it was, but it was before I was involved, but I think the face magazine, which was like the Bible at the time, voted them like the number one rock group in the country that year or something. And Just he, insane. I mean, you know, him and him and Joel pretty them. much really won that crown. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and you know, that spirit, especially when you're young, the spirit of people like, like that really it's exciting you know it's rock and roll it is rock and roll it was when Scratch Poets was forming and I was like I want to be and Tony was like look you're going to be in the crew basically but you have to finish your school stuff you know and uh, Hmm. and I think my dad had come and met them guys at some point and said something about look I really want my son to do his school stuff like um, you know it's great that he's Hmm. really, really wanted can you and so then Tony, after that point, was like, I'm not going to allow you to do this with unless you do your mm. GCSE thing or whatever. Mm. But at that time, that was then Prime Cuts. He said, once you do your GCSEs, if you do your GCSEs, I'll give you this um, D- DMC mixer. Because all I wanted was one of them DMC mixers. So Prime the Cuts, so, okay, gave for record, me my first mixer. Gave you your first mixer. Yeah. But no, no, my first scratch mixer. And gave you the... Th- the window of like do this and you'll re- you'll receive this yeah and after that the next year he he did the same he called me up and he got me my sponsorship with vestax and he then got me out in in 98 or 99 i was out at music messer in germany mm. showcasing the straight arm turntable in the 07 mm. pro mixer and that was when akai stand had the mpc 3000 as the like in a glass case like look what we're bringing out next year and it's in this fuck. I'm Damn. like, like you, oh my! Fuck, I want one of those. Uh. <laughs> Must have been '96. Tony came up to me. He was slightly drunk, and he's like, "I love you, man." And he gave me this kind of like, mm. maybe he was a fan of Son of Noise or Blade or whatever mm. else. And he's like, I think you're an amazing DJ, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, man, get this drunk guy away from me. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes when people are drunk, they give you the whole love speech. Yeah, and yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. oh, what's happened? I've yeah, never yeah. met this guy before in my life. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I, w- I want to put together a crew to, like, put UK on the map, basically, you know, like to mm. rival the, the the scratch pickles and stuff like that, who were also blowing up at the time, big mm. junkies and all these crews. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, if you if you got an idea, then I'm down, like, to to sort it out. But I guess didn't like, think much of it because he was drunk and you were just like, yeah. yeah. And I mean, people say stuff like that all the time. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, somehow, like, we started practicing together. We went to ITF in uh, Germany first, and then the one in New York, which he won. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the catalyst for Scratch Perverts starting off. Because it was all of a sudden, he was a world champion. And then his idea of having a crew to represent at the highest levels could then coalesce. Because it's like, well, I've, I've, I've done what I've said. Like, who's down? Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he was no, he's, on his, He's went out and he took steak and he Went out it, yeah. and he did it. Like, smoked everybody. Mm. And it's just like. Who's down? Mm, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then it kind of coalesced. It was like him, me, and then I think Joel was third, and then uh, Mark and Paul, and then Harry, mm. and then obviously Neil yeah. and you came later. But that that first coalescence happened, be, I'm sure, because of him winning, winning the ITF. Mm. And then when he came back, he was signed to an agency, and then the work starts coming in, and it's just like, uh, we need we need to like, Figure this out. Yeah, like yep. no one person can do all this work. No two people can do all this work. Like we need to to start building something to get, mm-hmm. to make it happen, you know? Mm-hmm. And then this kind of movement starts where, as you know, we kind of break into twos, which made the most sense. So we were killing the gigs left, right and centre. And it was basically everybody that ever came into Mr. Bongo's 
was in Scratch Perverts to start with. <laughs> <That's> not, <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of people at really? one point. How, yeah. many, how, many, how many Scratch Perverts do you think there were? One About stage? 700 <laughs> to start with. No, it was a lot of people to start with. It was, it was honestly like mm. Cam and everybody and all of those guys. They were, And it was so many people. And it was just quite a loose thing. It was just quite a loose thing. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it kind of got a bit more serious. And then it's kind of practicing started and stuff. And then it kind of ended up being... Right, I haven't got the story of this. This When did it start getting serious, though? At what point was it like, okay, well, let's I relegate want... the team. Let's pull them down. I want to say about 96, when I, st when I did my... F when I got... was about the time I did my first solo DMC mm. final. Mm. which was 90, I want to say 96 or 98. It wasn't a great routine that I did, but it was okay. And um, mm. um, it was around that time that things were really ramping up mm. and I, and, and you know, everything was getting a bit more like we're going to go and mm. we're going to go and do the ITF and we're going to go and do this. And we're going to get the Americans. We're going to get, we're going to get them. So it's like we're coming. Yeah. So I think it was 96, 97, maybe yeah. it started getting, yeah. Wow. Really intense. So, yeah. I, and that's when it kind of came down to maybe eight of us. So Harry was around a lot. Yeah. Kevin Renegade was around a lot. Uh, Paul, obviously. Me, Joel, Tony. And a couple of other people too. But I, my mind has gone blank. Mm. But it was, you know, it was good. People, everyone had input. Like, even though people weren't coming up with routines, I think it's important that I say that Harry had a lot of input into those early routines. Mm. And Paul as well, actually. Mm. Tony, as we're about to find out, is pivotal in what I believe. The, the exporting of a new way of, of, of using the turntable as an instrument into Europe, like you, along with a handful of others, made that shit look like rock and roll. But where did it all fucking begin? Where? I mean, uh, I was a hip-hop kid in the 80s, and we were... Initially, Scratch Perverts was myself, was Theo. Mm -hmm. um, ah, right. And bef before it became anything, do you know what I mean? Mm. When when a few of you got together, I remember Cam from Mr. Bongo was involved. Really? No But really. then it kind of... Then that shifted. I mean, Theo was obviously busy taking over the entire world at the time. And, and bloody well good he did too. And he did really well. <laughs> um, but then, you know, Joel was worked around the corner. Yeah. Uh, Paul first rate was coming in. Paul knew Mr. Thing. Um, yeah. And obviously we met yourself because you were coming yeah. into town. It formed okay. like a band, didn't it? it yeah, I mean, it, it did. I mean, the idea really was to compete. I mean, that was a bottom line, was to compete. So the, the way that you do that is, to, in my mind, to get the best people together. <laughs>